Thank you. Uh, yeah. uh, I would uh, request my co-author and uh, colleague uh, Chandra to share the screen, please. Oh, yes, sir. So, namaste, everyone. I uh, Because since we are working along different time zones, I don't want to say good morning or good evening. So, <laughs> so today uh, I'm uh, Murli and uh, along with my uh, colleague uh, Chandra, we are going to uh, talk about online teaching strategies for workshop-based uh, studio courses. We're going to share our experience, what uh, we've done at the CMR University School of Architecture. So, uh, can I be able to share the thing? Donald Sean, in his book, The Reflective Practitioner, coined the term reflection in action, which means to reflect on a behavior or action as it happens. Workshop-based courses are the most direct way of incorporating reflection and action. Are they very student and process uh, driven and not outcome driven? A workshop can be defined as something where all the required tools, machinery, knowledge, skills, resources with respect to a particular subject, topic, craft, or product are present. And it's also about collaboration, working, experimenting, Discussions between people sharing the same interest in that particular subject, topic, craft, or a product. There can be different types of workshops, such as open workshops. These are workshops where all the necessary tools, machines, etc., are arranged and students or people can use them to create various things. This is generally open to anyone and need not have an agenda, aim, or an outcome in mind. We have a maker space at the school where all the tools, materials, and machinery needed are uh, uh, presented and people can use these. The second one we're talking about is demonstrative workshops. Pure workshop, he, these are the workshops where an expert works or demonstrates and people can learn by seeing and may do the exact same thing or improvise. The interaction between the expert and the individual here may or may not happen. Third one is what we're talking as guided workshops. These are workshops which start with proper objectives and agenda and accordingly guided by the faculty or the mentor. The processes uh, followed by each individual can be different, but the interaction between the expert or the instructor is very crucial. An example for uh, this kind of a workshop is part of the curriculum in the school, where uh, in the foundation workshops, where we call it the one tool, one material uh, module, where a single material like a wire, paper, or wood is manipulated into uh, various forms to get used to the tool and resistance offered uh, by the material. Here, initial explorations are done to get used to the tool and the resistance offered by it. Failures that occur during the exploration offer learnings, which become part of the tacit knowledge in their later work. This tacit knowledge becomes uh, crucial later in the profession to ta tackle complex design problems. And the fourth one we are talking about is the hybrid workshops. It's a more blended mode of the above mentioned types. An example of this could be our uh, school's uh, course called the full scale workshop. Full scale workshops are an important uh, part of the school's uh, pedagogy to develop attitude, sensibilities, skill, knowledge by making, failing, reflecting, remaking again. As the name suggests, it is to have a realization of actual projects in one in a full scale. These are conducted every semester, which involves students of all the batches, which facilitate and encourage peer learning, collaboration, and vertical interaction between seniors, juniors, and faculty. One of the primary approaches used for these workshops is reflection and action. 
as the students reflect upon actions through practical exploration throughout the workshop. The core objectives of the workshops are to provide the students with resources, uh, including materials, tools, and uh, to explore practical problems. It's to provide guidance from experienced professionals while students are working on the projects, to enable the students to explore the making of real scale products and solutions. The images what you're seeing is all part of the uh, workshops. We have done uh, uh, 13 workshops till date. Due to the onset of uh, uh, due to the onset of okay. sorry for it. Uh, due to the onset of the pandemic, suddenly we were put in a situation where the full-scale workshops, which was meant to be everything in real time, which on to face-to-face, -face, we had to shift the uh, classes to an online mode because these are credited courses. So, which gave rise to uh, many challenges for us, like how can students access uh, resources and how can experienced uh, professionals guide while students are working on their projects? How can students explore the making of real scale products and come up with solutions accordingly in the online mode? And uh, how can students interact with each other and uh, uh, resource uh, person? So uh, in the whole process, uh, since the full-scale workshop is a hybrid type of uh, workshop, we have tried to list out various aspects that uh, played an important role in the smooth uh, conduct of teaching learning process based on our experience. These include uh, resources and uh, interactions, the actions we had to take, and how do we get the feedback uh, from the students. In the online mode, we conducted uh, three full-scale uh, workshops, which is the full-scale 107, 108, and 109. 107, it was the first workshop where we were pushed into this situation in April uh, 2020. Uh, I had uh, coordinated the entire workshop with another colleague of mine. So here, the idea of the pod came in as a main uh, uh, theme. The uh, students were to address pandemic challenges like isolation, distancing, entertainment, etc. The entire school, we divided the students into batches or groups of uh, 16 students and they had to propose their ideas in the form of a three minute video, which was uh, uh, screened at the end as an online premiere. Just to add to the thing, full scale workshop happens for uh, a week. That is uh, six days to be uh, precise, they had to present the thing on the sixth day as a three minute video. So, and in full scale 108, with the experience from 107, we wanted to get back to the idea of making in an online uh, format. So, the core idea of making uh, came back. We got four uh, resource uh, persons, including Chandra, who was one of the resource persons. Uh, where we offered uh, anamorphic illusions, character design, photography, and uh, seco fresco. The last one was a very complex thing where uh, students had to understand what the basic idea of a fresco is, and they had to uh, work with the materials and all those things to uh, present. And uh, students could sign up to any of these workshops based on their choice through a Google form what we had shared. And next was uh, full scale 109. At this point, it was the peak where uh, COVID had really affected a lot of families, students and faculties alike. The main objective was to actually uh, involve students to come up something creative and innovative just to address the situations we were all facing through uh, four projects, which uh, were uh, uh, dealing with uh, awareness is uh, in creating awareness or addressing work from home situations, uh, et cetera. Now, uh, coming to online teaching and learning itself. Before the onset of uh, COVID-19 in India, online teaching learning was mainly limited to distance learning opportunities that could cut across time zones. But recently, the online mode had to be adopted as one of the main strategies and the necessity 
to tackle the ongoing uh, pandemic across the country as well as the world. Our uh, school, we, since we are using the Google platform for the entire uh, university, uh, that was our uh, main uh, platform for online uh, teaching and learning. In the uh, Google platform, we uh, use this as uh, the main resources where we are talking about uh, the Google Calendar and uh, the Classroom. And uh, of course, the Gmail uh, is there and Meet, uh, where primarily the resources which took multiple uh, uh, roles and come to interactions. Uh, one of the main thing, apart from the Google platform, what we uh, used was the Jamboard and Miro. And uh, this really, uh, with the constraints what we had, these came as uh, opportunities. And when it comes to actions, we're talking about, uh, when it comes to asynchronous uh, activities, we're, we're uh, using the uh, classroom in a very effective way and Google Forms. When it comes to synchronous activity, because uh, of the very nature of uh, design studios, uh, the uh, Miro board and uh, uh, Google Classroom, Mentimeter, and all these things kind of uh, filled in the gap. I wouldn't say uh, they uh, uh, substituted it, but they just filled in the gap. Feedback, we had multiple opportunities uh, where uh, we could use all these uh, tools uh, combined. So uh, further, when uh, we talk about resources, because uh, we are talking about uh, workshop based and uh, we are a maker centered uh, approach we use for the school, the resources became a very important uh, part of the whole thing. So in the teaching learning process, in design education, these resources keep evolving from course to course and from generation to generation. Now, some of the uh, resources that are needed for the workshop courses, including materials, where uh, something onto which an action can be performed, or tools and machinery, which enables the action to be performed. And we have knowledge of what, when, and why of the action. Then we have skills, which are actually needed to perform the action. So uh, Chandra, can you take over the thing for the yes, next part? Um, coming to the second aspect, which are interactions, so, uh, this is one of the main aspects that distinguishes a workshop-based course. Um, and there are various interactions that play a major role without us even realizing it, uh, out of which uh, one of the main interaction that is very crucial is the student-teacher uh, relationship as in a workshop-based course, the reflection and action that we have discussed earlier applies to the teacher as well. This is well explained by uh, Donald Sean in his book, where he uh, explains how a faculty is also trying to solve problems along with the students by uh, sketching over the design. Um, the second kind of interactions that generally happen are the student-to-student -student interaction or the senior-junior interactions. Um, these are the kind of interactions that constitute an active part of learning in any institution. This became very difficult in the online mode as most of the students were away from each other. Um, in and offline classrooms, the students would keep interacting with each other uh, even when the faculty is not around. Um, the uh, whole idea of chance encounters or getting inspired from each other's work um, peer learning, etc., was also difficult uh, for us in the online mode. Um, in terms of the senior junior interactions, uh, it also plays an important role as in the real world, we all work in teams of different people having different levels of experience and we keep learning from each other. Um, Another uh, kind of interaction which was important, especially for the full scale, was the student and the resource person interaction. The resource person is someone who need not be an expert uh, in the craft, but has enough experience to demonstrate to the students. And uh, this resource person may or may not be a teacher. And uh, in this regard, our school has invited 
so many non academicians including traditional craftsmen um, as shown in uh, the picture and uh, other people as part of the full scale workshops the uh, next aspect that we would like to detail out is the action itself so um, um based on our understanding of uh, you know the maker centered learning we have uh, listed down different activities that are that have been generally performed in all the workshop based courses that we have conducted so far and these are as follows the first one is exploring um exploring is a, a major part of learning um right from the day we are born we learn by observing and exploring things around us um especially when it comes to solving problems exploration is very much needed as it helps us open towards multiple options and possibilities um the next one is experiment constant experimentation is also an active part of learning wherein it assures the learner if they are on the right track or not the experimentation need not be a very explicit prop, uh, process uh, but a simple drawing uh, uh, is also an experiment in itself the third aspect is a discussing um a discussing helps in understanding various perspectives towards the same problems um an important aspect of this is also uh, you know asking the right questions um next we come to feedback um feedback is something uh, which we found very crucial especially for the faculty it assures the faculty if the teaching and learning process is going uh, smoothly or not generally in an offline setting um there are a lot of ways to get feedback like um uh, even simple facial expression of the students or um uh, their general attitude or uh, you know vibe towards the activity also tells us a lot about whether uh the learning is happening or not um uh, we have broadly categorized um these uh, different types of feedbacks uh out of which the first one are the responses which is in general responses from the student whether they are understanding or not whether they are we have uh, less than 2 minutes sandra okay well, uh, whether they liking the idea or not um the second uh, uh type is the assessment uh, which is generally from the faculty side to look back at the student's progress and assess their understanding um the third type is the evaluation which is more quantitative and a comparative uh, element with regards to the other students and uh, last but not the least we have uh, reflections coming from the whole idea of reflection and action wherein the student reflects upon uh, whatever attempts they have done uh, like for example asking questions like what led to the failure or uh, how was this a success etc so coming to the uh, strategies uh most of them we have uh, been uh, telling during the presentation but some of them since this we are more to do with uh, materials and tools and uh, making so we had to totally uh, strategize as to how we do the same thing in the online mode so uh, first thing by design we used we designed all the exercises so that students can use materials which are easily accessible which are at home or uh, maybe in the neighborhood uh, shop so by design we eliminated the uh, need for complex tools or machinery for that matter student uh, teacher collaboration happened primarily to uh, google meet screen sharing and discussion and uh, as effectively as possible we tried to use jamboard and miro and things like that and uh, we formed uh, groups which involved different uh, types of students seniors and uh, juniors so that whatever interaction possible could be uh, done even without the presence of uh, the faculty so uh, we had to whatever uh, exercises we were making at this part of the workshop we had to really define it well so that the whole learning process could be directed towards uh, the common objectives in the online mode frequent uh, demonstrations and references were shown to the students and uh, 
we use the Google plat uh, Classroom uh, in a very effective way. And we continue to use it even in the offline uh, mode. So when it comes to the observations, uh, we found out that uh, in the uh, online mode, we had to pay a lot of attention to interactions, what kind of action uh, happens and for the feedbacks. Whereas uh, that used to happen uh, in an intuitive way in the offline mode. So in terms of uh, executing the uh, workshops, we had to use the online tools and uh, platforms very effectively because a simple thing like uh, affordability of having a stable internet connection uh, was a big challenge uh, in the online mode. And I'm sure most of you must have faced uh, this situation. The, uh, one of the important points was the resource person, the faculty seemed disconnected from the whole action part of the workshop because the action was happening mostly by at the student's place remotely. So coming to the conclusions or learnings from this workshop, uh, the uh, whole online mode of workshop, the online mode provided us with multiple challenges, but also provided us with equal opportunities. It helped us plan these workshops in a very organized way we are the use of various tools. This is something that uh, can be carried forward even in the offline mode. In the whole experience of online learning, it's important to look for opportunities with all the hindrances and constraints around. When thrown in situations, students figure out new online tools to put together presentations, videos, etc., with whatever minimal resources were at hand. Faculty and resource persons had to come up with new possibilities of achieving the desired outputs and objectives and make best of the available resources. Thank you for the opportunity, uh, Eddie.